All right, everyone. Welcome back to the land of Kem. I am your host and the author. My name is Jeffrey Drum. Thank you all so much for joining me again. All right, everyone, welcome back. This is episode 72, and in today's episode, I will begin part one of a series explaining the ancient, esoteric, alchemical interpretation of some symbols and deities found within the dynastic Egyptian religion, such as the scarab and bull that were presented in episode 37, the deity Amon, which is the topic for today's video, the Jed Pillar, and much, much more. Reinterpreting the symbolism from dynastic Egypt from the perspective of ancient chemistry has yielded some profound insights into the origins of these images. And I'm extremely excited about the material that we've presented in this series. So if you haven't already, please subscribe to The Land of Chem here on YouTube. Click that little notification button so you do not miss the new videos when they premiere every single week. If you want to help support the channel, just go to thelandofchem.com. You can pick up a limited first edition print copy of the book, grab yourself some Land of Chem merch. Either way, all the orders mean the world to me. Thank you all so much for the support. If you want to follow me on Instagram, my handle is at the Land of Chem. Ladies and gentlemen, I think that is it for today's intro. So without further ado, let's get right to it. All right, everyone, here we go with tonight's episode. Chemical symbolism that was integrated into the iconography of dynastic Egypt begins with the scarab and the bull. And I'll put a link to episode 37 in the video description below so you can watch the full explanation. But to summarize, I have proposed that the deification of cattle across the globe in the ancient world was a direct result of the utilization of cattle manure to produce methane gas. The manure provides the essential anaerobic bacteria that begin the digestion of the agricultural material in the slurry, which releases methane. And if this manure was the valuable catalyst for this chemical reaction, it would certainly make a lot more sense that this magical animal would also be revered by this civilization. Then, the first step of producing this slurry is to collect the dung, a practical yet critical stage in this ancient chemical manufacturing process, which is perfectly symbolized by the operative behavior of the scarab beetle. This is a dung collecting beetle, and to me, the conventional explanation of why it represents the glorious sun, solar cycle, and rebirth never resonated to me as being true. However, if you reinterpret this symbol from the perspective of ancient chemistry and methane manufacturing, the operative behavior of the scarab beetle scavenging dung perfectly represents the dung collection process that began the natural gas production cycle within the step pyramid. Which brings us to one of the primary functions of methane gas, which is as a synthesis gas for the production of other chemicals. In this case, converting the natural gas into an aqueous ammonia solution within the reaction chambers of the Red Pyramid, a structure and process that was then symbolically represented in the first modern apparatus to produce ammonia designed by Fritz Haber in the early 1900s, which you can see here on the left, perfectly mimicking the configuration of the Red Pyramid's reaction chambers here on the right. And you may recall that from very early in the episodes here on the channel, that the etymology of our modern word for ammonia is directly connected to ancient Egypt. In 1782, Swedish chemist Tobern Bergman revived the word ammonia after producing a pungent gas derived from sal ammoniac a word that literally means salt of ammon, and it was most likely ammonium chloride. So to any of you that are familiar with the dynastic Egyptian pantheon, ammon should now have your attention, and its genesis can be found in the ancient chemistry of ammonia manufacturing. In fact, the name ammon derives from a word meaning invisible or hidden, which is a primary characteristic of this mysterious and extremely useful chemical, ammonia. But this isn't the only aspect of ammonia that is symbolized by the deity Amon. And that's right, ladies and gentlemen, as with the scarab and bull, I am proposing that the origins of this imagery trace back to ancient industrial scale chemical manufacturing of ammonia. This is a chemical that transformed our modern world and our ability to produce massive scale agriculture that feeds the global population today. 
90% of the ammonia that is manufactured today is for fertilizer. It is one of, if not the most important chemical ever created. And the same applies today as it did to this ancient civilization that originally discovered and synthesized this compound. And thus, we see represented in Amon his role as the deity of fertility. So I would propose that this was not originally intended to represent a god of fertility, but rather it was an esoteric symbol for the chemical ammonia, the fertilizer. This is an ancient symbol of a chemical, and you can even see here the sheaves of wheat growing out of the crown here, representing the abundant crop growth that can be achieved with ammonia-based fertilizer. But that's not all. Ammonia isn't utilized for just altruistic purposes. It can be converted into something much more destructive and deadly. And this is exactly why the deity Amon is not just the god of fertility, but also the god of war. All right, everyone, just a quick reminder that if you want to help support the channel, I've got brand new Land of Chem merch finally available at thelandofchem.com. There's a new black on black with the fifth degree logo. There's hoodies, long sleeve shirts, a whole bunch of t-shirts in a variety of colors in both different logos, and of course, limited first edition print copies of the book, The Land of Chem, an initiation into ancient chemistry through the degrees of the Egyptian pyramids. So if you want to help support the channel, just go to the website. You can pick up some Land of Chem merch, grab yourself a copy of the book. Either way, all the orders mean more to me than words can possibly ever describe. So from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much. So the aqueous ammonia solution that was being produced here inside the Red Pyramid of Dashur was then converted into a solid compound fertilizer, urea, in the Bent Pyramid, which you can see here in the distance. And this series of pictures were taken in three different years, and you can see how drastically different each experience has been. Again, the Bent Pyramid from a distance and walking up toward the northeastern corner of this immense monument whose internal chambers were designed to transform that aqueous ammonia solution into solid fertilizer by percolating carbon dioxide gas up through the solution within the Bent Pyramid's primary reaction chamber. And this is the first half of the dichotomy that is symbolized by the deity Amon, the benevolence and beauty of abundant fertile agriculture. But that aqueous ammonia solution by a very easy tweak of the chemistry can be transformed into something monstrous. Enter ammonium nitrate, the explosive responsible for the catastrophe in Lebanon several years ago. And I'm sure all of you clearly remember the immense power of this chemical. And it is no surprise that the deity Amon also embodies war as the ammonia it represents would have most likely also been utilized by this ancient civilization for manufacturing explosives, whether that be for mining operations or otherwise. And that, ladies and gentlemen, was also the unfortunate fate of the ammonia that was produced using Fritz Haber's ammonia manufacturing machine and the reaction sequence that eventually became known as the Haber process. What Haber had intended to provide fertilizer was adopted by his fellow Germans to make weapons during World War I. And I suspect that old Fritz Haber was also traveling to and researching in Egypt, and he took a trip inside of the Red Pyramid of Dashur, and after attempting to reverse engineer the structure exactly like I did, came up with the same hypothesis that I have presented here on the channel, that the Red Pyramid was an ancient chemical reactor system that was designed to produce ammonia, an extremely powerful chemical that can be used for both good and for evil, and it was eventually adopted symbolically within the dynastic Egyptian religion as the characteristics of fertility and war embodied by the deity Amon, an ancient symbol for the chemical ammonia. Hi. Say hi to the people. Hi. <laughs> All right, everyone, that is it for today's video. This was episode 72, The Alchemical Symbolism of Ancient Egypt, Part 1. I really hope you enjoyed today's video. And in the next episode in the series, I have some absolutely amazing material coming up, starting with windmills, sulfur mining, the inverse piezoelectric property, chemical analysis of the iron oxide found on the Giza Plateau, and a whole lot more. So if you haven't already, 
Please subscribe to The Land of Chem here on YouTube and click that little notification button so that you do not miss the new videos when they premiere every single week. If you want to help support the channel, just go to thelandofchem.com. You can pick up a limited first edition print copy of the book. Grab much for the support. If you want to follow me on Instagram, my handle is at the Land of Chem. Ladies and gentlemen, I think that is it for today's episode. So I will see you next time. Yo. Are you still watching this? Please subscribe to The Land of Chem here on YouTube and click that little notification button. New videos coming out every single week. And check out this other episode. Come on, do it. Do it now.